I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Paul Adams. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? You know, I'm well. It's uh, it's pretty easy. 4:30 in the afternoon, wrapping up a a great day of working with clients and a and a good team. I feel super blessed. Yeah, you sound super blessed. You do sound super blessed. Uh, tell us what part of the world are you in right now? So Seattle is where we call our home. Uh, though we travel quite a bit, my family and I in our RV, and I have a certain rule that clients aren't allowed to meet us in person so that I always have the flexibility to be where I want to be. So we spent a month in Wyoming this year and a month in Newport Beach, California. Wow. in the last 12 months. Sounds like fun. Wow, wow, wow. So tell us, uh, tell us, tell us, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? Uh, I think it's probably the the podcast is the uh, the primary of how you and I connected. Yeah. Uh, it's my guess. <laughs> Most definitely. Tell us about your podcast, please, and what you do there. So my podcast, Sound Financial Bites, is meant to help, it was originally meant to help clients better stick with our financial philosophy when they weren't in a meeting with us because the entire world would rather have us be irresponsible with our money rather than responsible with our money. And so we wanted to give clients a conversation that they could engage in when they're not with us. And what it's turned into differently is a way that I can feel not guilty about not working with clients. That if we were to interact with them, And it just wasn't a fit or they couldn't afford our fee or it was not a good choice for them to engage us at this time. I'm giving away everything we've got on the podcast in our terms of our philosophy so that I don't have to feel at all inappropriate about declining somebody. Because I think what we do is so different that it could be hurting somebody say, hey, it's not good for us to work together. But now that I know we've gotten all this information out there, I don't feel like I felt released from only working with the clients that we most enjoy working with. Yeah, it's intriguing. As a financial guy, options are always great, right? Pun intended. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. So who did you learn that skill from, that skill of um, serving at every level? So uh, I, the poem, I don't know if it's a poem or a short story people tell, of the little girl that's walking down the beach and she's desperately grabbing starfish and throwing them back into the ocean over and over again. This old man walks up and he says, there are thousands of starfish on this beach. It's a hot day. There is no way you're going to be able to make a difference in saving these starfish. And she grabs another starfish and says, I made a difference to that one. (laughs) It made a difference to that one as she throws them back. I feel that way in terms of giving away what we do is I don't know who it's going to help, but I figure it doesn't like, it's very easy for me to give it away and doesn't cost me a thing. It's only actually helped us be more successful as a company. Hmm. So that's one. And then the skill development, which I've heard you ask many of your guests about, came from actually training financial advisors, where for years on end, I would train financial advisors for three times a week, all by GoToMeeting before GoToMeeting added video. And so all I had was my voice. And so I worked a great deal on my voice and then working with clients remotely for years made it very easy to now communicate audio only in podcasts. Hmm. Yeah, it definitely is a skill that has developed on my side of the world to what I do. Um, it, is an, it is an amazing skill, isn't it, to be able to, to feel the beat of a conversation via vocals only, isn't it? It, it is. And, you know, they say that if you're meeting with somebody in person like, some huge amount is the body language. You know, I don't know what the stats are, but something like 65%. And then the rest of it is tonality. And then a very small part is the actual content of what you say. And I think when you're audio only, whether that be in a podcast or a phone call with somebody, the body language disappears. And what spreads out is that tonality and ability to communicate. So I'm, I'm with you. And you have like your accent and your way that you speak is nearly hypnotic. 
Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. It's it's definitely um, an advantage I have, um, which is being born um, under the Caribbean sun where the Caribbean sea is. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> well, I can't wait to come visit you and hear more about it over coffee. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> it's the value of these conversations. Usually when my voice go, my, my body usually follows. Um, so it's it's really, I'm really excited for that aspect of what happens with these conversations. I've seen that. Um, people that have spoken to and gotten the opportunity to meet most definitely i love the idea and model of what you're doing by meeting as well traveling across um from state to state right uh, pretty amazing stuff you walk the talk don't you paul <laughs> uh, well i think i think it's important for for my wife and i one thing that i think happens for a lot of people is they choose to live a lifestyle that they've kind of floated into and oftentimes get trapped by the amount of income they make. I think it's most prevalent actually to the families that are making between 300,000 and a million five a year of annual income. And that we, where we get our autonomy is not from cool investments and not from the amount of income that we make, but how well we control our household cash flow. And so if we live radically within our means, we end up with a lot of opportunity to do what we do from anywhere because we can say no to all the things that would keep us trapped or cost us our autonomy. Hmm. Yeah, and definitely. so that's the part of the walk in the talk I love. Yeah. There's a book. One second. Let me just pull this. Oh, John Elridge, Waking the Dead, right? Mm -hmm. And um, do you know, have you ever heard of that book? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I reached out to him and I was really intrigued because his email responder was, um, we have made it, we have been very intentional with how we answer emails. It's a small group of us. Um, so we will get back to your email, uh, but please bear with us. Um, uh, because we have decided that we want to keep this small and, um, be able to serve you all, um, one-to-one -one. again, I'm paraphrasing, but it was really mm -hmm. amazing to see that because he, he saw the value of that. And when you read his book and then you see that it just connected and I'm guessing that's around what you're doing as well, Paul. Indeed. Indeed. In fact, one of our big ambitions uh, is to travel the country. We have one other family that's on board with us and we're going to travel the United States for a full year in our RVs. We homeschool our children hmm. And, uh, and be in a position where not only can we travel, but then while I'm in different cities, I can speak during the week at business conferences and on the weekends, find churches across the country where I can speak. Oh, sweet. Well, that is amazing. This conversation can definitely go on for 12 minutes by 10. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Paul, where's the best place for someone to connect with you who has resonated with all you've shared thus far? Uh, people can find us uh, certainly on Twitter. Uh, they can find us on Facebook. Uh, both of those are Sound Financial Group. And uh, certainly you can find me on LinkedIn is easy. And the podcast is Sound Financial Bites or soundfinancialbites.com is a great way to find us. And, uh, you know, we're, we love being able to help people make better decisions with money, even if all they do is get through all our material that we put for free online. Hmm. Well, amazing audience, you're hearing it again live with Paul Adams. Again, he is the podcast host of Song Financial Bites. Paul, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. <laughs> Paul, what is your earliest childhood memory? Hmm. Man, that is a tough one. Uh, I would say my earliest childhood memory is me helping pick, I don't know why this one sticks out for me lately. My mom was the primary breadwinner when I was growing up. And as a result of her being the primary breadwinner, uh, she went and got a master's degree. So my dad stayed home way before that was cool. Hmm. And I remember we would go, she would have these long days and she would have to go to school at night to finish getting her master's. And I remember like this, this time that my dad and I would have going to pick her up and my dad just died two weeks ago and we would go Damn. pick her up. And simultaneously, that same stage of life was where my dad would take me to McDonald's for breakfast every single morning on the way to school. So those are probably my two sets of earliest memories, both things doing with my, either my dad or going to pick up my mom. Because I remember it was always dark and late when mm -hmm. we pick up mom because she went to school so late. You know, one of the things um, that amazes me when I, when I jump on on this quest of having these conversations is how things intertwine and interconnect. Uh, you're actually the second person that has told me 
that they lost their father um which is which is i mean like what's the possibility of that right in a Mm -hmm. in like in a three-hour window right or less a two-hour window actually so that being said again uh condolences on your father's death um can i offer well how old do you think you were in that memory Mm -hmm. Five or six. Mm, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture? Or yeah, before I go again, ah, why do you think that memory is so clear, and how do you see it connecting to who you are today? Uh, it's it's unique because my dad uh, gave me my entrepreneurial spirit. The reason he stayed home was he was a really high level, effectively executive with one of the largest construction companies in the state of Colorado, and when the family that he worked for. Uh, decided to sell the company, my dad got nothing out of it. And he said, you have got to work for yourself. You've got to own your own business. And I remember my dad would have little businesses that he would work in the summertime, business, small businesses he built. Uh, but every year we, in the summer times, we would be driving around all summers, hanging out with dad. It was like this refrain of, you got to work for yourself. You got to work for yourself. My mom, on the other hand, worked for the Department of Energy here in the United States and retired as one of the highest powered women who were not either appointed or elected in the U.S. government. Hmm. And so I had this entrepreneurial spirit fused with this unbelievable work ethic that my mom had at a time when there really was a ceiling on what women could accomplish in work. And she like broke through every ceiling that was presented to her. And uh, I think the reason why that stands out so much is it spoke to the creative ways my dad and I spent time together, plus the hard work that my mom had to do to create stability so that my my dad could teach me to be a man. Wow, that's intriguing. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, to add what you said, I, I love the idea of the driving, as simple as it is, and to see that you have now uh, interconnected that in your life uh, with your family. And that, my friend, mm. is intriguing to me. Yes. Yeah. I mean, a big, some of my other big memories now that you bring it up are, uh, driving across country because, uh, I'm back in Washington state now, but I was also in Washington state as a child when we would drive to Wyoming, which is where a lot of our family lived. Yeah. And, and the, the idea of this very long, like grueling road trip that we would take a few times a year that we, it never felt grueling to go on the trip. It was always exciting and fun and uh, but it was, but it's a long drive for two parents and a small child. And yet, uh, I, and so I love being on the road with my family now, pro- probably in part because of those trips. Yeah. And you're like the new generation of the model now, right? Like you're not doing <laughs> that vehicle, um, where it was limited to, uh, definitely being seen as grueling. Right. But definitely Mm -hmm. you're the new model, right. Version to that, which is pretty intriguing. I can well imagine the effect it's having on your family, um, because of the foresight that you've been given by your father's sacrifice. Pretty amazing. And not just a sacrifice, actually an investment. Indeed. Indeed. And in, in our case, uh, I think one thing is listeners are hearing that and they, we, along with these two longer trips, we will we'll end up in 20 total camping trips a year wow. with the family. The way I watch our children's brains respond to the changing environment mm-hmm. as we travel in different campgrounds and all of that is incredible to watch how quickly they pick up and learn new things and how the neuroplasticity really works when you change environment, how quickly they learn new skills or remember things. So uh, I would just throw out to any listeners, if you're thinking about going camping with your kids and you feel like they might be too small, bring some of their toys and get them outdoors. It's amazing. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Well, Paul, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Oh, 12. Uh, let's see. I think Footloose was the movie that was released about that time. And my very first audio I ever had was a gift from my cousin, Mike, who, that was the Footloose soundtrack. And so any song on the Footloose soundtrack <laughs> is my favorite song when I was 12 because I figured out I could turn down the volume on the video games and let that soundtrack play. Yeah, 
Love it. Love it. All right. Well, definitely you are the guy with the footloose, right? Traveling all over the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> definitely at least all over the United States. All over the United States. All right, Paul. Well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Paul? I'm ready. Paul, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Mm, Most weeks, no. Mm. Unless I catch a new series and then it sucks me in and then I binge watch it all in like two days and then I don't watch TV again for a while. What about screen time? The phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Mm, More than eight hours a day because of work. All right. All right. Paul, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Paul Adams, what would you say that is? My own unique reality statement? Your own unique real statement. Mm, I would say I help people design and build a good life. There we go. Paul, this has been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? You know what I would say, just being in this conversation with you, Angel, and some of the conversations we've had, uh, I would say to pause, this is a great reflection for me, but to pause long enough in your life to see if the direction your head is, the direction you really want to keep going. If you started over, would you be where you are now or would you design something new? And if it's something new, then figure out how to design that in flight to where you're going right now. I mm, love it. Just like how this guy does it in flight, right? Um, while traveling <laughs> all over the states, most definitely. Paul Adams, my friend, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thanks, Angel. It's great being here. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com That's poemsbyag.com